the off 27. KSI will be in the ring twice against Swarms and then against Pineda twice in one night. KSI debuts the DAZN X series. On September 17th, it is the trilogy Canelo versus Triple G3. September 17th, live on DAZN pay per view. And on October 8th, they were born rivals. Chris Eubank Jr. will do battle with Connor Ben live from the O2. And now it is time for our main event. Alexander Usyk, Anthony Joshua, the WBA, WBO, IBF, and now the Ring Magazine Heavyweight Championships on the line. This is the one that we've been waiting for since last year. So much has happened in the lives of both of these fighters leading up to tonight's main event. We mentioned this off the top, Chris Mannix. Very seldom do you find fights that have more storylines to extract from than the one we're about to watch. No, very few, if any, at least in recent memory. You've got Alexander Usyk fresh off winning three versions of the heavyweight title and almost immediately he finds himself and his family in a literal war situation. When Russia invaded Ukraine, Usyk decided to stay. He joined a terrestrial uh, military battalion, effectively a militia there to help his country, comes out and immediately starts to train for this fight. Anthony Joshua, he loses for the second time in his career and he replaces his team, adds Robert Garcia, elevates Angel Fernandez and is coming in, at least theoretically, with a completely different boxing philosophy for this fight. So a lot of variables that we can't account for until these two step in the ring. And Chris Algieri, a lot of talk particularly when it comes to Anthony Joshua, but the mentality of Joshua heading into this fight. Different things coming from Joshua. He says, I don't have a confidence issue. Robert Garcia is saying, we do need to build his confidence coming into this fight. Yeah, absolutely. I think I, I think I said this at the top. Technically, Joshua has everything he needs in order to win this fight, in order to beat uh, Alexander Usyk, to get Breach Kane his title. But does he have it psychologically? Does he have it inside? Does he have the spirit to dig deep where he needs to, to figure out how to, how to defeat the Ukrainian. All right, let's send it down ringside for the national anthem of Saudi Arabia. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Ministry of Sports proudly welcomes you to the main event of the evening. Are you ready? Let's get this party started! Still free. 
fight. History made by legends. Bringing us all here tonight. Tonight we celebrate. Willpower and strength. Joshua. a champion to get this very moment a moment the world has never seen before a kingdom of legends Saudi stand up tonight we rage on the Red Sea zone 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 We are eagerly, eagerly anticipating the ring walk of Anthony Joshua. And we have seen Joshua Chris Mannix take his time with ring walks in the past. But he is very prompt this time. Ladies and gentlemen, now making his entrance to the ring, the challenger, AJ, Anthony Joshua. just retained but held tight in a classic. The setbacks and the recoveries, the refusals to stay down, but bruises heal and determination hardens. And the punches grow in speed and power. And the feet move faster. Belief grows and ambition burns to challenge again better than ever. Not on Mount Perfection, are ready to rage on the Red Sea. Anthony Joshua.
in life, you can absorb almost anything. If you are able to anticipate and prepare psychologically to accept it. Believe it or not, the easy part of our fight is fighting. Discipline enables a person to do that which needs to be done, no matter how he feels with it. I don't believe in talent. You can only have a lot of determination and willpower. That's all you need. You have to have the will to win. The customary theatrical entrance of one of the biggest stars of this generation, the two-time heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua, who finds himself in the unusual position of both having it all and desperately wanting more. After suffering his second defeat at the hands of Alexander Rusik last year, he's followed a familiar pattern in hopes of avenging it. Just as he did before defeating Andy Ruiz to recapture his titles the first time, he says he's rewired his mentality and will look for a wholesale change of approach in the ring. He's even traveled back to Saudi Arabia, the site of his last revenge. But this time it feels even bigger, even more dire. So he heads into battle with a new coach, Robert Garcia, for the first time in 11 years. A victory would be a colossal moment for British boxing, a defining win in his career. But a loss would call into question just how many more colossal moments like this one Joshua can be a part of. And here is the champion, Alexander Usyk. Wearing the colors of freedom, as he describes it. The colors of his native Ukraine. And now, making his entrance to the ring, the defending world champion, Alexander in the blink of an eye, from Olympic gold to world champion. And not just a champion at cruiserweight, but now, in older, wiser days, at heavyweight too. That night, a masterclass of skill and technique in a sport of pain. And no! And so, to this rematch, defending his title where the Arabian Desert meets the Red Sea. And not just a master craftsman in his small workspace. but an inspiration to all across his war-torn land. U is for Usyk. You are for Ukraine. Alexander Usyk. on Alexander Rusik's shoulders tonight is far heavier than the heft of the three heavyweight titles he carries to the ring. He fights with the weight of grief, of sadness, of concern, the weight of an entire country of Ukraine resting atop him. Usyk is already a first ballot Hall of Famer with a resume on par with any active boxer today. With a victory tonight, he could become the first man to hold the ring cruiserweight and heavyweight titles in his career. Everything about this moment is unprecedented for Usyk, both the circumstances he's fighting within and the accolades he's hoping to achieve. Earlier this week, Usyk said, the one who does not compete does not live. 
everything that Usyk lives and stands for will be on display tonight. You know, when they were selling the broadcast rights to this fight, Usyk went to the Saudi Arabians and said, I want the rights to give it to my country for free. They gave it to him, and there will be an astronomical audience watching in Ukraine tonight. As we take a look at the tail of the tape, same as it was last year. Alexander Usyk now 35, Anthony Joshua now 32. All the physical advantages go to Anthony Joshua. And now it's time to find out who will leave the true heavyweight champion. Let's send it down to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'll honor challenger and champion with their respective national anthems. Please remain silent. First up, the national anthem for the United Kingdom, God Save the Queen. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem for Ukraine. Ladies and gentlemen, from King Abdullah Sports City here in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, this is the rematch the world has been waiting for. 12 rounds of boxing for the unified heavyweight championship of the world. Presented in partnership with the Ministry of Sport, in cooperation with Skill Challenge Entertainment, Matchroom Boxing, K2 Promotions in association with U617 and 258 Management. Broadcast live on Sky Sports Box Office and DAZN and sponsored by JD Sports. This contest sanctioned by the IBF, the IBO, the WBA, and the WBO. The officials at ringside, timekeeper, Joel Capozano Jr., the three judges scoring this contest from the United States, Glenn Feldman. From Ukraine, 
Viktor Feshenko. From the United Kingdom, Steve Gray. And in charge of the action at the bell inside the ring, working for the 189th time in a world championship contest, veteran referee, the Puerto Rico Luis Pabon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the officials are ready. The fighters are in the ring, and they are ready. So for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner with his head trainer, former world champion Robert Garcia, wearing black and officially weighing in at 110.9 kilos or 254 and a half pounds. He captured Olympic gold and since becoming a professional, his record stands at an excellent 26 fights, 24 victories, including 22 big wins by knockout. He has two defeats, and he is the fighting pride of London, England, and the United Kingdom, the former two-time heavyweight champion of the world, AJ Anthony Joshua. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, the colors of Ukraine, white, blue, and yellow. Official weight, 100.5 kilograms or 221 and one half pounds. This Olympic gold medal champion now has a perfect record as a professional. 19 fights, 19 victories, 13 wins by knockout, fighting for and representing the sovereign nation of Ukraine, the former undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world, the reigning, defending, undefeated, unified, heavyweight champion of the world, Alexander Hussein. Okay, guys. I give you instruction in the dressing room. They have an unclean match, okay? Good luck. God bless you. Three years ago, Anthony Joshua was right here on Saudi soil, attempting to win back his titles and reclaim his status as a top heavyweight. He was successful that night, but you can make the case it was the spoils that come with being a champion that beat Andy Ruiz as much as it was Joshua. This time, AJ has a strong, talented, and focused Alexander Usyk in front of him. Anthony Joshua can't just be good to win this fight. He's going to have to be great. Round one. The heavyweight championship of the world on the line. Alexander Usyk. The southpaw in the colors of Ukraine. Anthony Joshua in the all-black trunks, just like his boxing idol, Mike Tyson. In the first fight, Usyk came out very aggressive, was able to back Joshua up right away using that lateral head movement and straight left hands right down the middle. What well, Usyk said earlier this week, he acknowledged, listen, we've had almost a year to study one another again. It might look a little bit different. There are also advantages, if you're Usyk, to being able to fight an opponent like Joshua after tasting his power for the first time. It reminds me a little bit of how Canelo Alvarez fought G Gennady Golovkin the second time. He was a little more cautious the first time around. 12 rounds of experience with Golovkin enabled him to be more assertive in their second fight. Well, I will say in the opening minute here, guys, Joshua looks a little less reactive to all the movement and the feints of Usyk. He's not mirroring Usyk quite as much as he was in the first in the first contest, at least in the opening minute. You know, conversely though, Corey, this fight is once again being fought in the center of the ring, at least in the first minute and a half of the first round. That is an area that Alexander Usyk wants this fight to be. The jab gets through there from Usyk. 
The major difference I see already is that Anthony Joshua is bending his legs. He's changing levels much better than he was in the first fight where he stood very tall and was in range for straight left hands. Bit of a quiet start here through the opening half of the opening round. You know, one area Joshua was successful in the middle rounds of the first fight was body shots. That's the best way to slow down the movement of Usyk. That's the second body shot that he's thrown this round. Just as you said that, Chris. Yeah, that right hand to the body landed from Joshua. A couple of jabs have got through from Usyk. There's perhaps the first left hand to break through the guard of Joshua. Joshua being very smart, very economical with his punches, fighting long, throwing right hands to the body and upstairs, but also keeping that up and down movement. Jab lands from oh. Usyk a moment ago. There's that up jab of Usyk. He can throw it from angles, Chris Algieri, that other fighters just can't. Absolutely. One, it's being, for him being a southpaw, having that right hand, that lead jab in front, but also the fact that he's such a loose-shouldered fighter. That front hand is so, so free-flowing. Final 10 seconds of an interesting opening round. Oh. Joshua trying to make adjustments, but Usyk maybe getting the last word with that left hand. That's not great. I can get him today. Get the parts fast and the job done faster. Very tactical opening round for these two heavyweights. We see that up jab. I said that Usyk has a very free-flowing lead hand. He's very creative with that shot, often leading you to think that that hand's coming and then drops that left hand down the middle. We didn't see a lot of left hands in that round, but the right hand was busy. So you learn something there in the corner. Angel Fernandez is operating as the chief second. He is the man in the ring. Robert Garcia, you could see him in the picture there, but he is outside the ring uh, operating as a trainer. Round two underway. Of course, Angel Fernandez, the, the holdover, if you will, from the old Joshua camp. And that corner is something that bears watching too, because while Robert Garcia and Angel Fernandez have talked about them being in lockstep throughout this training camp, they have very different training backgrounds, and I'll be curious to see if they're in sync when it comes to the advice. Speaking of in sync, you heard the word rhythm in the corner. Anthony Joshua is showing fantastic rhythm so far. He's got his level changes. He's moving side to side. He landed a very good straight right hand to the body to open this round. And what I haven't seen from Usyk yet is kind of unleashing that straight left hand that had success against Joshua in the first fight. Joshua's been elusive. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't normally think of him as an elusive fighter, but he's, he's brought a new level to his game tonight. Joshua jabs back down to the body. Usyk trying to get his jab working. That lead hand is always working for Usyk, but Joshua able to come over the top of it and now digs a left hook to the body right along the belt line and a right hand down the middle from Anthony Joshua. Yeah, that body shot set up that overhand right. Two punches that were really lacking in the first fight from Anthony Joshua were the left jab, which he didn't land many of. He landed one earlier, and that left hook to the body. Putting those in combination is a great idea for Anthony Joshua. Joshua just missed with that left hook a moment ago. Perhaps you can speak to this. The posture of Joshua seems a little bit different in this fight. You mentioned the knee bend, mm -hmm. but just overall, he seems to be approaching Usyk much differently. Absolutely. He's being more aggressive. He's being more heavy on that front foot. He's being the bigger man, but also staying low is helping him stay out of range of those shots. There's that up jab again. Joshua wise to come right back with a jab of his own. 
Joshua's putting a lot of physical pressure on Usyk this fight. Very different than the first fight where Usyk was really the man who's putting on the pressure, both mental and physical. Yeah, and he's shown good commitment through these first two rounds of making sure he's, he's making contact with the body of Usyk, making him think that those body shots are coming. You know, one constant in the career of Alexander Usyk is that no one has yet been able to lead the dance with him. There have at least been portions of these rounds so far where Joshua is the one making Usyk do something that he isn't deciding to do. Yeah, Usyk is having to have to work very hard right now to stay with him, stay in this, this fight. Ooh, right beautiful hand right down the, the middle top. there from Joshua. Final 10 seconds of an excellent round for Joshua who sinks another right hand to the body of the champion Alexander Usyk. Really? Really. Free testing and charging? And if you need a new one, we've got you. Really? Welcome to America's number one battery destination. AutoZone, your battery solution. Solid round. Solid round for Anthony Joshua. You see him there landing the right hand over the top. There's another one right down the middle. Those are the kind of shots that rung Usyk's bell in the first fight. And now Joshua being much more aggressive, finding them early on. Yeah, I like the ring generalship from Joshua through these first two rounds. Robert Garcia mentioned this during fight week. He doesn't want Joshua out there fighting like a Marcos Maidana, a fighter that was one of Robert's charges for many years, fought Floyd Mayweather. He fought recklessly at times. They want Joshua applying pressure, but doing it in a smart way, and he's doing that so far in this fight. When I was in camp with uh, Robert Garcia, I sparred Marcus Madonna quite a bit, and reckless is a good way to, uh, to describe <laughs> his, <laughs> his method of attack. Well, I think you pointed this this out as well, Chris Algieri, which is that you know when people heard Robert Garcia in the corner of Anthony Joshua, people immediately thought, okay, he's trying to build a heavyweight Brandon Rios. But Robert Garcia's tactics as a trainer are a little more diverse than that as Joshua lands a good right hand. I love what Joshua is doing. He's responding to every combination that Usyk throws with a body shot. Very smart to make sure that he's answering the punches coming at him, just like Usyk did in the first fight. But yes, to your point, Corey, you know, Robert Garcia was a phenomenal boxer puncher as a champion himself. And just because he was known from training brand Bam Bam Rios, he's got a different kind of athlete in front of him now with Anthony Joshua. We're seeing the athleticism of Anthony Joshua in the early going here, the ability to make adaptations to his game. See the weight out on the front foot, changing levels now with Usyk, and look at Joshua with the head movement getting out of the way of the jabs of Usyk. Excellent rhythm from AJ thus far, keeping that slight tick-tock and up-and-down movement. Joshua said that the key for him in this fight is to worry about what he's going to do offensively and not be so concerned with what Usyk's doing and how he can react to it. I tell you what, again, a lot of it has to do with Anthony Joshua, but I'm a little surprised that Usyk has kept that left hand holstered as often as he has. Usyk lets go of that left hand. One of them lands. One of them sails past the body of Joshua. But Joshua now looking for a big uppercut, but he gets met with the left hand that you were calling for, Chris Mannix. Usyk starting to flow with his combinations a little bit more here. You're already starting to see the adjustment from Usyk. He's starting to up the punch output, he's upping his lateral movement. Usyk is one of those fighters too, whether it's a Lomachenko or a Terrence Crawford, they collect data in the early mm -hmm. rounds of the fight. They see how a guy is gonna fight you and make adjustments accordingly. Good right, hand, uh, right hook moments ago landed by Anthony Joshua. Oh, left hand comes through the guard of Anthony Joshua as round three comes to a close. 
Deep, deep breaths. Yeah. We're 3 0. All right? Breathe. Deep breaths. Big breaths. Big breaths. Big breaths. One more. How do you feel? Come on. Okay. How do you feel? Come on. We need the double jump. Here we see that right hook I've mentioned toward the end of the round there from Anthony Joshua. Great variation to the right hand, something I thought he needed to do more of in the first fight. Instead of just throwing the one-two down the middle, that looping right hook around the glove is working very well okay, so, champ, so far. Push, see, see. Okay, champ, you know, you back him up pretty easy. He's right there for the right hook, okay? But it has to be after that double jab. Double jab, sometimes triple jabs and then the right hook, all right? You're winning every round, champ. Be clever. Okay? Joshua, as he has for all three of the rounds thus far, waiting till the last moment to step off his stool. Interesting in the corner of Joshua as well. One of the, the party lines from Joshua's new camp and Robert Garcia has been positivity all the time in trying to instill in Anthony Joshua that the Joshua of old can be tapped into, that he hasn't lost a step, and trying to instill in him that he can take some of those old tactics and bring them to Alexander Usyk tonight. Very upbeat corner for Anthony Joshua, at least to this point. A little more assertiveness from Usyk over these last couple of rounds. You can see him start to settle in into this fight. Like you said, Chris, he's got that analytical mind, and you see him collecting, collecting the data, starting to get that right hand going a little bit more, starting to land that left hand, finding his angles like that. A little more bounce in the step Boom. of Usyk as well, who comes right through the middle with a left hand. I love the way how Usyk will throw away his lead hand to land his left and punches to where AJ's going to be, not where he is. Nice up jab from AJ there. He's actually learning tricks from Usyk as he goes. Joshua looking for that uppercut to the body. He's had some success throwing that right hand downstairs. Throws that one to the gloves of Usyk a moment ago, but Joshua just generally looking more threatening than he did in the early stages of the previous fight. Aside from his posture and moving forward, I think that has a lot to do with his balance. He definitely seems much surer on his feet, and I think getting lower using those legs has been a, a big benefit for AJ and his power punching. Good left hand there from Usyk. Now tries to wrap one around the guard of Joshua. You know, I would say, say this. I mean, Joshua has had success in the early part of this fight, but the real estate this fight is taking place in it's almost identical to where it took place in the first fight, right near the middle of the ring. Right in the middle of the ring, they traded some shots, and Usyk landed a good right hook. Usyk almost. actually put together a nice series of punches, a, a straight left hand to the pit of the stomach, and a right hook up top. Anthony Joshua answered with a right hook himself. Both men go to the body. Usyk tries to come over the top of the left hand. That's the second big adjustment I've seen in this fight, is the fact that Joshua is answering every combination that Usyk throws. He did not do that in the first fight. Hard left hand down the middle from Usyk once again. This is high level heavyweight boxing. Here we see, as I mentioned, Usyk uses that right hand as a throwaway to mask that left hand that he throws down the middle, through the guard, and around the corner. He's a master at utilizing that right hand to land his rear left hand. There's that beautiful head movement and an answer again. Slips to the outside, jabs over the top, gets away without taking a receipt. Very, very smart, beautiful movement, which looks a lot like what Usyk was able to do in the first fight. 
And as we begin round five of a back and forth fight, Chris Mannix, your scorecard certainly reflects that. Yeah, I've got it two rounds to two, uh, even up through four rounds of this fight. The key right now for me, first two rounds, Usyk kept that left hand pretty much cocked, not throwing it with any type of, of repetitiveness. Last two rounds, started to let it go a little bit. And look, this Joshua is trying to make it more physical, but this is still a boxing match. And all we heard all week long, even from members of Joshua's team, is that he can't win a boxing match. I'm curious to see if at some point he tries to make this a more physical fight. He offers a big sweeping right hand there, caught on the left glove of Alexander Usyk. And part of the issue of dealing with Usyk, Chris Algieri, is how draining, both physically and mentally, it is seeing the constant motion, the constant adjustments of Alexander Usyk, both with his hands and his feet. It's also the fact that you're dealing with almost a different fighter every round. He, he, he builds as he, as he goes. Like right now, we're seeing that movement, that movement to the right side, getting outside, staying invisible to Anthony Joshua while throwing punches down the line. I mean, the, the mental pressure is, is probably harder than the physical pressure from the smaller man. And this is something Usyk did really well in the first fight. You're starting to see shades of it Ooh. right now, but there's a body shot. Did that one stray low? Yeah, that was below the belt yes, line. Yes, it did. <laughs> Even when he's not trying to be, Usyk can be funny. I'd love to see the replay and see how low that actually was. I, it looked like he caught him maybe on the thigh of that left leg. Those hurt, and those can linger with you, especially yeah. from a big man like AJ. Right, it might not be a legal shot, but it's not like it didn't do some damage. But prior to that low blow, I, I was mentioning, Chris, one thing Usyk did really well in that first fight was force Joshua to punch too far across his body and getting him off balance for counters. Absolutely. So he, yeah. So that's what I meant by staying invisible. He stays outside that lead leg beautifully. He fights like a like a, a southpaw should. He moves to his right. He stays outside the lead foot. He's very difficult to hit with anything flush. His ability to keep that head off the center line makes him a very difficult target. Like that. Beautiful counter over the top with the jab. And that's the thing with Usyk. It doesn't have to be a power shot because he hits you with shots you're not ready for and that you don't see. Your chance for both fighters here in Saudi Arabia. Both men fan favorites. This is where Usyk is a very dangerous man. Once he finds his rhythm, he starts feeling conky and co confident in himself. Oh, beautiful straight left Good hand. Good shot there. And there were stories about the ferocity of Usyk in this camp from some of his sparring partners. One of his partners said, he called me while he was on the plane, coming home from the press conference and said, we're sparring when I get off this plane. And he said he looked scary in that session. And Usyk starting to build with intensity at the end of this round. I saw something late in that round that gave me shades of the first fight. Anthony Joshua started pawing the left hand instead of snapping it. And the, one of the reasons is because of shots like that. Usyk has been doing a great job of slipping inside the jab and jabbing with Anthony Joshua, having him run into him his shot, making his jab almost like a power shot. Yeah, there was that punch too. Caught him right below that left hip. Oh yeah, those, those shots on the hip bone there, those hurt a lot and they linger with you. They can make your whole leg numb. You know, there are obviously some subtle differences, Chris, but to your point, this feels a lot like round 13, 14, 15 of that first fight. We're seeing it fought in a very different, a very similar style to what we saw the first fight. Yeah, and I think the more the fight goes on, it's gonna look even more and more like the first fight. Round six underway. Alexander Usyk, the unified heavyweight champion. Anthony Joshua trying to become a three-time heavyweight champion. Usyk coming out using great side-to-side -side head movement, good feints, firing from his movement. 
was good anticipation there by Joshua. Saw Usyk about to duck down, hit him with a good left. I love that left hook to the body. That was a punch that was severely lacking in the first fight and something I figured he would be working on with Robert Garcia. There's Usyk with a little body work as well. Left hand downstairs, a right hook right along the elbow of Anthony Joshua. Now you can hear the corner of Joshua calling for that double jab. They want him to operate behind that. And right now, he's only sort of flicking it out there, not throwing with any kind of purpose. Yeah, he's using it as, as a pawing range finder once again, which I think is very dangerous. He came out in the first round snapping the jab. He actually landed several good shots with that left hand early on. There it is again. Usyk comes over the top of the jab again. Circles out to his right. Joshua still dangerous with each and every shot, and we saw that in the first fight. You know, we look back on that first fight as a masterful boxing performance from Alexander Usyk, but it wasn't like he didn't have to battle through adversity, and it wasn't like he wasn't hurt at times in that fight either. Absolutely, Corey. I mean, Joshua did a lot of really good things in that in that fight. He's a dangerous puncher. He's a very sharp, technical puncher. Beautiful body work here by Joshua as Usyk touches the ropes. Final minute of round six. As Joshua continuing to have success to the body when he is targeting the midsection. Got some swelling again over the right eye, which we saw in the first bout as well. Oh, good combination from Usyk. A snapping right hook coming around the guard of Joshua. That's one thing we're seeing earlier tonight is the combination punching from Usyk. Nice straight right hand. Fainted to get the opening there. Usyk comes right back with a combination of his own. A right hand connects. So Ooh. does a left hand. Now it goes back downstairs and a jab up through the guard of Anthony Joshua. Notice how Joshua is no longer responding to those combinations like he was in the earlier rounds. He's not gonna hang if you keep pressuring him with the smart punches, long jab, jab and right to the body. Here we see long one-twos down the middle, and then the body work. Very, very smart. Nice adjustment. This is exactly what I called for for him to be successful in this fight, was to throw straight punches down the middle where he had success in the first fight, and then follow up with body shots. Although those shots upstairs didn't land all that cleanly, he's still been able to answer and respond to the body and keeping Usyk from firing back and stealing the moment. I'll tell you, Usyk is a terrific defensive fighter. Among his many skills, his head movement, you can see obviously on screen, but you watch these replays, he's getting that guard up every time Josh was looking for something big. Well, if you think about it, I think if, if those shots are landing cleanly, the fight would probably be over already. He, he is that good at defending and taking the brunt off a lot of these shots. Round seven begins, and that's what makes Alexander Usyk so special. He isn't just a good boxer or a good defender for a heavyweight. He is a good boxer and defender at any weight. If you were to shrink Usyk down to any other weight class, he's still a spectacular boxer. Well, that's the that's the thought experiment of the of the pound for pound, is right. it not? And, right. And all of the pound for pound greats have always had great defense. The rough stuff on the inside here, and on that pound for pound list currently, Ring Magazine has Usyk number two. Usyk trying to become the first man to win both the ring cruiserweight title and the ring heavyweight title with a victory tonight. He's uh, Sports Illustrated's number three, pound for pound Corey. <laughs> Joshua loads up with a big sweeping right hand there. Misses Usyk as he slides off. Robert Garcia was calling for pressure in the Anthony Joshua corner. Well, and there seemed to be the belief, there was the express belief in that corner that the pressure would eventually break Usyk down. That they're seemingly happy with what Joshua is doing so long as he keeps going to the body and so long as he stays in front of Usyk. 
That's an interesting thought to me. I, I'm not reading that at all. I don't see that. First of all, I don't, I don't see a ton of pressure being applied to Usyk. I also don't see him breaking anytime soon. Yeah, if you're expecting Alexander Usyk to break down, a guy that's been in several championship-level distance fights, that might be wishful thinking. And against guys with a much higher output than Anthony Joshua. Well, one positive for Joshua, guys. According to CompuBox right now, Joshua has landed 16 body shots. He only landed 15 total in the first fight. So there is something, perhaps, to what Garcia has seen. Oh, there's, there's absolutely been a tactical adjustment from, the, from the, the Anthony Joshua side, body shots being a major part of that. Speaking of body Ooh. shots, it was a good one from Usyk a moment ago. And there's a sharp left hand just coming right from the shoulder. It snaps the head oh. back of Joshua and another one and another. That was a sneaky left hand from Usyk there on the inside. It seems like AJ seems to be falling into some of those old habits and needs to make an adjustment himself. Usyk just batting away the lead hand of Joshua. Goes back down to the body where he has had success in this fight. But he's falling into the dance of Alexander Usyk once again as we come to the end of round seven. Nice head movement there from, from Anthony Joshua. Some nice popping work from Usyk. That was a beautiful, again, he goes back to slipping inside the jab, comes with the left hand over the top, beautifully executed counter punch there. A dangerous one as well, to slip inside the jab that way and then to, to throw your punch that tight to thread the needle and land on, a, on, a, on an orthodox fighter. Very impressive. Let's take a look at Chris Mannix's scorecard here, Chris. Yeah, I've got it 68-65 in favor of Alexander Usyk. Corey, you phrased it that Joshua is sort of falling into this Usyk dance, and I think that's an appropriate way to describe it. Usyk has now kind of taken control of the pace of this fight, and he's having a lot of success. His tactics, Chris Algieri, are just, they're basic boxing at its best. Just yes. simple slips, mm -hmm. left, right. He's not doing anything special. He's just doing it at an extremely high level. So once again, we have the issue in the center of the ring where there's some condensation. I saw Joshua during that last round slip a little bit yep. and look down. Now we have that problem once again. Yeah, for those of us just joining us, we had this issue in the fight prior where we had two heavyweights that were slipping consistently, especially as the rounds wore on. Yeah, Zhe Li Zhang actually fell down after slipping in the ring. Now Joshua himself will get toweled off as well as we await the true start to round eight. Here we go. You know, back to the slips of Alexander Usyk as well. You know, oftentimes we think of head movement as just a defensive mechanism in boxing. For Usyk, it's a predecessor to his offense as well. It is making you consider just where that left hand in particular is coming from. Well, yeah, it's, it's a setup, and it's also, it blinds his, his movement. Uh, he's not an in-and-out boxer where he's, where he's changing his critical distance line. He's a side-to-side -side fighter. He moves laterally, so it allows him to always be in range to counter. He takes those little slips, and he's right there to hit you with the counter shot, which we've seen consistently tonight. There it is again. Beautiful slip inside-outside. Oh, good body shot from Joshua. There. Hook. Certainly not a direct comparison, but I was thinking of the George Foreman Michael Moore fight. George Foreman being the bigger guy, the power puncher, fighting the southpaw. He used sweeping left hands to walk Moore into a right hand. I feel like that would be a great tactic for Joshua. latter half of the eighth round here. As Joshua has put together a couple of good sequences with body shots oh. in this round and just misses with that right hand. I think Usyk just pivoted at the right time out of the way of that one. If you're Joshua, you have to stay committed to that body. He had two really good body shots early in the round. 
The problem with fighting Usyk is you can never build on anything. Beautiful right uppercut to the body. Oh, and again. Goes back downstairs, a three-punch combination to the body as Usyk wraps him up in the center of the ring. So it looked like a little wince of pain from Usyk as he tied up. Those are some brutal body shots. Probably the best combination of the fight for Anthony Joshua. The most damaging for sure. Can Joshua continue to find routes to the body or use them to create a route for a big right hand? Combination from Usyk, but a slapping right hand there from Joshua as well. The elusiveness and the combination punching is, is proving difficult once again for Anthony. Ooh, uppercut on the inside from Usyk, but body shots from Joshua. The best action of the fight at the end of round eight. And a smile from Joshua as he goes back to his corner. Here we see a great left hook to the liver by Anthony Joshua, which was a pretty consistent weapon that last round and one that he should really focus on, especially on both sides. And here we see it from the other side, the right hook and then back to the left and the right. One of the best combinations by Joshua in either of the first, uh, either of the fights where he's been able to land more than one punch at a time. Yeah, if you're Joshua, you have to think the body of Usyk, think of it as a more hittable target. Yep. The head has not been there. The head boom for Usyk has been excellent as it was in the first fight. You keep digging to that body, you'll slow him down. A gargantuan main event here in Saudi Arabia and another gargantuan fight coming up on September 17th. It is the trilogy, Canelo and Triple G3. Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, live on DAZN pay-per-view. Round nine now underway. Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua. Joshua perhaps finding the true key for him in this fight in round eight. Those hard body shots. Usyk just so clever. Comes back with body shots of his own. He's able to slide off. Like I was alluding to last round, Usyk is so hard to build an offense against because he changes up so often. Changes his rhythm, changes his angles, changes which punches are working. Shot to the body from Joshua, counter right hook up top from Usyk. Oh, Another shot uppercut again. to the body from Joshua. Little lapse in concentration, a rarity from Usyk as he gets met with a jab as they come out of the break. A little yeah. less movement from Usyk in this round. I was just going to say that. The head movement specifically, a little bit more of a stationary target in this round. Joshua's having a good round right now. Well, is Usyk perhaps feeling the effect of these body shots now? They have shown to slow Usyk down in the past. A pair of sweeping hooks there from Joshua Connect. Joshua again to the body. Now making it rough on the inside. I love the use of the left hand by Joshua. Throwing those left hooks high and low. Now making it rough. Very rough, and he'll be worn for a hammer fist there, I think, on the inside, but not for long. As Joshua now in pursuit. Usyk. He is on the run right now. 45 seconds remaining in round nine, and Joshua finally has been able to pick the safe of Alexander Usyk. Oh, nice left hook over the top. Joshua's picking his punches very smart. A sustained body attack from Anthony Joshua as he's finding true confidence in his offense for the first time in sub-21 rounds with Alexander Rusik. This has been the most dominant round that Joshua has shown in both fights. 
Oh, good body shot on the inside. Asserting physical dominance is Anthony Joshua. That was the idea coming into this fight, and it is coming to fruition. That last round saw the adjustment that we needed to see in order for Anthony Joshua to have a chance to win this fight. He came out, he was physical, he was a bully in there. He let both of his hands go. Beautiful work on the inside. And it all started on the strength of the body work. He started early, he stayed to it, gave himself the opportunity in the distance to let his hands go, and he never let up. And as many punches as he threw that round, he didn't seem to blow his gas tank either. He seemed to be still pretty fresh at the end of the round. Let's see what Usyk can do in the next round. And we see Chris Mannix's scorecard. Now Alexander Usyk just one point ahead. Yeah, things start to tighten now. By far the best round of the fight in that last round for Anthony Joshua. It's a good word to choose, Chris. Bully. That was the first time we've seen Joshua in two fights with Alexander Usyk assert his physical dominance. And here comes Alexander Usyk, yeah. right back <laughs> throwing punches. Look at that frenetic movement, just in and out. He's picking up the speed and the output. Trying to erase the memory oh. of an excellent round for Anthony Joshua. And some good shots land from Alexander Usyk. That check hook from Usyk was very sneaky. Oh! oh. Big left hand connects from Usyk. Usyk firing back. Josh was in a little bit of trouble here. A big reply here from Usyk after a dominant round from Anthony Joshua. Now it's Usyk who's firing away. Usyk has the tendency whenever you have a good round against him, he comes out and he makes you pay for it. And Joshua's dipping right into that right hand of Usyk every time. Joshua still stalking forward. Mm. Now Usyk digs to the body. A left hand downstairs. Oh. But Joshua meets him with a right hand. That shot rocked him. That one rocked Usyk. Usyk having a look over at his corner. Uh, he was looking at the referee. Yeah, he, he thought said that low, was low. below the was belt. That, okay. Yeah. Regardless if it was low or not, he was rocked upstairs. You know, and I've said it many times in the build-up to this fight, Anthony Joshua is dangerous at all times. He has the power, he has the sharp punching. And that includes when Usyk gets on a roll and is really flowing offensively. One straight right hand, and Joshua is back in the round. But look at Usyk once again, uppercut and a right hand. Now, yeah. Usyk is not your typical or any typical one-punch knockout puncher. How he hurts you, oh. how he gets knockouts, are an accumulation of punches, which we're seeing right here. Yep, well, Usyk exactly. is not your typical fighter overall. He is not your typical person. So much on the line, so much on the shoulders of Alexander Usyk. You see Joshua a little bit too straight-legged right now as he stands back against the ropes. That's not a good sign. When you put yourself on the ropes, it's generally because your legs are tired or they're shot. And you saw that, Chris, in the 12th round yes. of their last fight, where Joshua needed to come out with some urgency, and it was Usyk going for the knockout at the very end. Yeah, I, I thought in the first fight it was more exhaustion than, than the fact that Joshua was hurt at the end. Another that he was right taking all that damage. From Usyk. Oh. Punches raining in from the Ukrainian champion. Oh, good Down to work. the body, and now upstairs. Usyk putting on an offensive show in that final minute. As dominant as the ninth round was for Anthony Joshua, it was equally as dominant for Alexander Usyk. That whole round could be a replay at this point. There's a big shot over the top from Alexander Usyk. He came out, guns a blazing right from the start of the round. Joshua had a great round the round before Usyk came out to, to make him pay for that. And pay for that he did. Oop, there's a big shot back from Anthony Joshua. Great punches from both men. Probably the most sustained action that we've seen thus far in the series. Both men having their moments. 
Yeah, Usyk putting together one of my favorite combinations there. The uppercut that pops the head up and the straight right over the top. Evander Holyfield sitting ringside. Evander Holyfield, given his history, probably thinks this is a sparring session. <laughs> As round 11 begins, it was a massive round 10 for Alexander Usyk. And guys, we talked about Usyk's ability to make adjustments. Well, how about the adjustment he made in that last round? Not just to stop Joshua from what he did in the ninth, but come back and return the favor. You hurt me in the ninth, I'm going to hurt you bad in the tenth. Yeah, yeah, and, and one step above, which is, you know, the kind of competitor that Usyk is. Usyk is still looking very fluid, very explosive here in the 11th. Oh, cracking right hook there from Usyk. You could hear that one. And once again, it doesn't have to be hard, especially if your opponent doesn't see it. Body work in reply from Joshua, but Usyk again, back to that pace, giving Joshua something to worry about, something to occupy him, mm. either mentally or physically, at every second of this fight. Notice the legs now of Joshua standing very tall. He's not as low as he was earlier in the fight. Good body Good shot body there. Good body shot lands from Joshua. Usyk wise to tie up there and thwart the momentum. You definitely don't want Joshua flurrying to the body. He no. can still be dangerous. Usyk's very, been very good at that this fight. When Joshua does get him pinned against the ropes, he ties Joshua up. Anthony's got to find a way to create a little bit of separation in situations like that. Yeah, when he keeps Usyk in that middle distance like he did in round number nine, he was able to rattle off combinations and do a lot of damage. About 10 seconds ago, Usyk slipped a body shot, rolled out of the way of a body shot, came back with the left hand. Joshua actually initiate, initiated that tie up there. Oh, Just there's that up jab again. Go, and there's the up jab from Usyk again. Just batting the lead hand out of the way from Joshua and coming up through the middle. It's a really oh. impressive surge the last two rounds for Alexander Usyk. Especially coming off that ninth round. Ooh. Those punches just missing. This was a fight that could have gotten away from Alexander Usyk. He looked like he was starting to weather from the body shots in round nine. Oh, good body shot again. Looked like a little shot on the break there from Anthony Joshua. And a deep breath from Usyk as well. Oh. But a fantastic round from the champion once again. And a little playful left uppercut there from the champion as the bell sounds. Here we see both men trading right hands. The rear-handed right hook from Joshua and a little check hook from Usyk. And here we see Usyk. That shot actually looked like a low blow. Looked like he knocked it down. And Usyk just running those hands, doing a good job of not loading up on shots, touching his opponent, and spinning off without waiting for the receipt. And there you see Alexander Usyk on my scorecard, 106-103. Anthony Joshua needs a difference-making knockdown or a knockout on my scorecard to win this fight. And we would suspect there was desperation in the corner of Anthony Joshua in Usyk's corner. It was almost like Usyk was meditating, talking to himself, trying to find three more minutes to hold on to all of his heavyweight titles and to become the Ring Magazine heavyweight champion as well. And he can't be confident either coming into a fight like this that he's got this decision in hand. And he doesn't look like he's fighting that way either. He looks, he looks like he's coming out to win the round. A hard body shot from Joshua a moment ago. He's gonna need oh. more of those. He's gonna need shots like that one. The right hand. That was a really good straight right hand that rocked the head back of Usyk. 
Busick bobbing, weaving, letting his hands go constantly. Oh, good answer with a three-punch combination from Usyk. A big right hook ended that combination. The exclamation mark from Alexander Usyk. Yeah, you're really seeing that fatigue and that frustration in Joshua right now. Oh, big, big left, left hook, hook from Joshua. A right hand as well. Good reply from Usyk as he goes back down to the body and runs the combination upstairs. And Joshua gave Usyk that opening to reply like that. If you're Anthony Joshua in this situation and you land a punch that does damage on Usyk, you've got to follow it up and sell out in this situation. Yeah, the, the, the sustained attack has been what's been missing from the game plan. He's been landing great shots. He's had Usyk stunned several times and hurt to the body. Trade shots in the center of the ring there. The jab of Usyk, the right hand of Joshua. Joshua looking fatigued, but to his credit, trying to crowd Usyk here, but he has just 60 seconds to make something happen. And that's to your point that you said a few rounds ago, Corey. Even if he's tired, even if he's hurt, he's still dangerous. Anthony Joshua can hurt you with any punch. Oh, big right hand from Joshua, but Usyk just will not stop throwing. A defiant 12th round here from Alexander Usyk, who, guys, probably doesn't need to be trading like this with Anthony Joshua, but the heavyweight champion is acting like one right now. Before he was a champion, he was a warrior, and he's acting like one right here. He wants to put an exclamation point on this fight. Final moments of our main event. Has Alexander Usyk held on to those titles? That is it. And both men exhausted at the end of 12 fast-paced rounds as Alexander Usyk looks to the heavens and what a moment here between he and Anthony Joshua. A lot of respect between these two fighters, who regardless of the outcome, two of the top five guys in the heavyweight division. Well guys, I know fighters' reactions after the final bell you know, they're not always authentic, they're not always rooted in reality, but what is your opinion of the look of Anthony Joshua right now? Does he look to you like someone who thinks he won that fight? No. He, yeah, he looks a lot to me like the guy at the end of the last fight who didn't look or feel like he won that fight. I mean, at the same time, Usyk didn't exactly raise his hands in celebration either, so I'm expecting these scorecards to be pretty close, but I thought Usyk did enough to win it. We talked about the sustained attack earlier in that last round. It just wasn't there. For Anthony Joshua. Whenever he had Alexander Usyk buckled like he does right there, he didn't follow up with the kind of combinations that would change the course of this fight. Well, I think Usyk showed throughout this fight, you know, one of the many things that makes him special, Chris Algieri, is even when he is under duress, even when he might be hurt, the movement continues. Yeah. So it's, it's not easy to follow up on Usyk. He, he does not make it possible most of the time. And also makes your opponent more tired because they're throwing shots and missing. They're reaching for you and Constantly. allows him time to counter you, to make you miss, to make you more tired. The punches you miss exhaust you way more than the punches you land. Great respect between the two champions, and why not? I mean, that was a fantastic performance. They they both gave it their all. They both had their moments. I don't know if you heard that. It, moments after a heavyweight title fight, Anthony Joshua offering to help Alexander Usyk and help the plight of Ukraine. Whatever happens with the result of this fight, Anthony Joshua remains a humanitarian outside of this ring, and his mind is already going to that seconds after the fight.
as they both hoist the colors of Ukraine. Together in unity, Usyk and Joshua as we await the final decision. Ladies and gentlemen, from Jeddah in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Glenn Feldman scores it 115-113 for A.J. Anthony Joshua. Steve Gray scores it 115-113 to for Alexander Usi. And Victor Feschenko scores it 116 to 112 for the winner by split decision. And still the unified heavyweight champion of the world from Ukraine, Alexander. With the weight of a nation on his shoulders, Alexander Rusik is now the king of the heavyweight, heavyweight world. Warriors. Let's give them both a round A little of surprised, applause. quite frankly, at the scoring for Anthony Joshua. I had it 116-112 for Alexander Rusik. I could have easily seen it 115-113 for Rusik. It was just hard to see seven rounds for Anthony Joshua, but the right guy gets the win in this fight. Alexander Usyk is the unified heavyweight champion, and we will now see whether Tyson Fury is really retired. Right, you know, when we say he's the heavyweight champion of the world, of course, that's reliant upon Fury sticking to his word and remaining retired. But of course, he still has a couple of days to officially relinquish that WBC title, which may tell us how valid it is or is not. I think if Anthony Joshua won, there'd be a much bigger chance of Tyson Fury returning. With Usyk, I just don't know if that fight is enticing enough for him to return. Oh, I think it is. I, what else is he going to do? <laughs> <laughs> He's a fighting man. What else is he going to do? He already unretired like a week ago to fight Derek Chisora. He'd get in for the undisputed championship against Alexander Usyk. Good luck. Usyk is not easy for any man. Yeah, I know there'll be a... I can already read the columns afterwards this fight saying Usyk has no chance against a guy like Tyson Fury given the size disparity. Don't talk to me about that. Alexander Usyk no, yeah, I don't has agree a with that chance with anyone, anyone, anyone in the heavyweight division. Absolutely. Alexander Usyk, quite frankly, is a generational boxing talent, guys. He is one of the very best of this generation. A first ballot Hall of Famer, a history maker now as the former Ring Magazine Cruiserweight Champion and now Ring Magazine Heavyweight Champion of the world. And the circumstances that he did it under are quite simply unimaginable. Now the question becomes, what is the future of Anthony Joshua? There's little doubt that his career will continue A little frustration there as he heads back towards the ring. But there will be a rebuilding process for Anthony Joshua. He is not going to get the marquee fights right away, nor do I think he would seek out the marquee fights right away. Well, listen, there will always be an audience in a market for an Anthony Joshua fight. He's one of the biggest draws of this generation. One of the biggest money makers of this generation. The question is, where does he go if Usyk is the man atop the division? One hell of a fucking fire, man. Let's give him a round of applause. Oh, man. So that's just emotion. Wait, wait, I'm talking. Okay, okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, guys. Look. 
If you knew my story, you would understand the passion. I ain't no fucking amateur boxer from five years old that was an elite prospect from a youth, bro. I was going to jail. I see some hype little youths in Reading jail. I got bail and I started training my ass off. Because if I got sentenced, I wanted to be able to fight. I bust my case. But cousin Benga, where's he at? G14, raise your hand. I'm still in this Usyk, sorry. But it's because the fucking passion we put into this shit, man. Guys, I'm telling you, this guy to be me tonight, maybe I could have done better. But it shows the levels of hard work he must have put in. So please give him a round of applause as our heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> Woo! Motherfucker. I'm not a 12-round fighter. Look at me. I'm a new breed of heavyweights. All them heavyweights, Mike Tyson, Sonny Liston, Jack Dempsey. Oh, yeah, you don't throw combinations like Rocky Marciano. Because I ain't fucking 14 stone, that's why. I'm 18 stone, I'm heavy. It's hard work. This guy here is a phenomenal talent. We're going to cheer for him three times. Well, how many belts you got now, bro? Five. Hip, hip. Yeah. 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 And as I said, I was studying Ukraine and all the champions that have come from your amazing country, but I've never been there. But at the same time, what's happening there is, I don't know what's happening, but it's not nice at the end of the day. I've seen it with Lomachenko in his second fight against Orlando. There was unrest in Ukraine, right or wrong. There was issues in Ukraine in your second fight. There was civil war. Vitaly Klitschko, when he faced Danny Williams, civil unrest. Usyk as a champion, please raise your hand. Under them circumstances, he managed to become champion. Champ, champ! Champ, champ! Champ, champ! And I just want to say, Bismillah. Well, that was something. That was a, a truly unique moment in heavyweight boxing history. I don't know that I've ever seen a fighter effectively cut a promo, pro wrestling style, after losing a fight quite like that, but also giving a great deal of credit to his opponent in the meantime. Anthony Joshua now engaging with the crowd on his way out. And you know what, guys? You know, we're just, we're watching a man cope with his loss in real time. That's, we're seeing the emotions come out in ways that maybe you wouldn't expect. Yeah, th there's ways to handle it. That, that wouldn't have been my choice, but interesting scenario. As well, always he, he's always, I mean, he hasn't lost that often, but he's handled losses in somewhat bizarre ways. Remember, he drew a lot of criticism for how he took the loss to Andy Ruiz, sort of hugging him and acting like it wasn't devastating to him, like most people in boxing, including some boxing luminaries, expected him to believe. But something tells me Usyk will have a lot of different things to say. In this ring right now, Alexander, you've retained your heavyweight titles. You are still champion on what I'm sure emotional night for you. Can you try and sum up how you're feeling? Uh, I want to pray, I want to thank everyone who prayed for me. I want to thank everyone Богові за його допомогу, яку він мені сьогодні дав, тому що він мені дуже сьогодні і багато дав. I want to thank God for the help that he gave me today because he did give me a lot today. Мій Бог Ісус Христос. My Lord is Jesus Christ. Uh, I can thank you Saudi. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Inshallah. We know this fight was being broadcast in the Ukraine. Do you think that they are, in the words of Alex Krasiuk, having a big party there tonight? How do you think this victory will be received? I know it's a very, very difficult time for you. You are fighting not just for your undefeated record tonight, not just for your belts, but for your family, your friends and your people. 
Що ти відчуваєш? В Україні цей бій був показаний безкоштовно, багато людей вболівало за тебе. Це був бій не просто за пояси чи за свою команду, це був бій за всю Україну. Я присвячую цей поєдинок державі своїй Україні, Збройним силам України та всім там, хто оборонить нашу країну, своїй команді, своїй країні, всій моїй країні. I devote this victory to my country, to my family, to my team, to the whole, to all people, militaries who are defending the country. Thank you very, very much. Do you mind if I ask you about the 12 rounds that we've just witnessed? A very good fight to watch. What was it like to be a part of? A much more uh, evenly contested fight than the first fight. Now we want to talk about 12 rounds, which we just saw. Як було бути учасником цього змагання набагато більш конкурентного, ніж перший поєдинок? А це вже історія. Його будуть дивитися багато поколінь. Особливо той раунд, де, де мене намагалися сильно бити. Але я, слава Богу, вистояв і переломив ціль. Uh, this is this is already history. Many generations gonna watch this fight, especially the round when someone tried to beat me hard, but I stand it and turned it in a different way. Thanks God. Alexander. There was uh, some upset from the Joshua camp at the end there. Did you feel that you had won the fight and that you were going to be crowned the victor? Ми побачили певні емоції негативні з боку команди Джошуа. Чи ти відчував, що ти переміг у цьому поєдинку і що перемога достанеться тобі? Yes, of course. One more question about the future. There's one belt that you still do not have. It's occupied at the moment by Tyson Fury, who claims he is retired. What do you think happens next? Do you want that WBC belt next? Do you think it will be against Tyson Fury or is he really retired? Як ти думаєш, наступний поєдинок буде проти Тайсона Фюрі, чи він насправді пішов на пенсію? Ні, він не пішов на пенсію, він хоче за мною боксувати. І моя команда буде в цьому напрямку працювати. Я буду боксувати чи з Тайсоном Фюрі, чи я не буду боксувати взагалі. No, I'm, I'm sure that Tyson Fury is not retired yet. I'm sure, I'm convinced he wants to fight me. I want to fight him. And if I'm not fighting Tyson Fury, I'm not fighting at all. And you believe you will become undisputed heavyweight champion of the world? Only God knows whether I will or not. No. Ми усі, оці хлопці, парубки, моя команда, я їх дуже люблю. Вони мені допоможуть цьому. But all these gentlemen here around me, my team, they're gonna help me. I just wonder if you had a final message for everyone back home. Останнє послання. Кому? Для фанатів. Слава Богу за все. Thanks Lord for everything. Congratulations, well done. Eddie Hearn. Oh, we will now hear from Eddie Hearn. We'll keep it back down ringside. Eddie.